Hi, and welcome to GameSack. This episode we're going to do arcade versus console, where we compare the home versions of an arcade game to the arcade. Let's go to the arcade, Joe. I want to play. <laughs> you don't have to. We have the arcade games here in our house. That's not an arcade game. Yes, it is. Where the hell's the cabinet and the monitor and the ashtray? Oh, it's invisible, silly. The way this works is you have yourself a super gun, which you either have to build yourself or have someone else build for you. It doesn't have to look like this. And what this does is it provides the power, the coin slots, and AV connections, and also your joystick connections. And you just plug it in there and then hook it up to your TV, turn it on, you're ready to go, you're playing an arcade. Well, isn't there a quarter slot or something? Yeah, that's, that's what these buttons are for, fool. Wow. And in this episode, we're gonna be doing Earth Defense Force and comparing it to Super Earth Defense Force for the Super Nintendo and Fantasy Zone and comparing that to the various home console versions that exist for it. And in order to be fair, these little random little notes here will decide who gets to cover which game. So you get to cover this game. Fantasy Zone? I don't think so. Let's see which one I get to cover. Earth Defense Force. Why do I so get a I, Sega game? I, no, I, get, I get the one that has a Nintendo home console port. So anyway, I guess I'll cover Earth Defense Force first, and then Dave will come back and cover Fantasy Zone. So yes. here is Earth Defense Force. Stay glued. Earth Defense Force, or EDF, is an arcade shooter by Jalico. Now I don't know where they got the idea to make arcade games because they are a third rate developer at best, though it is amusing to see them try. Now I rarely see shooters in the arcade, and I've got to admit this is a fairly basic one. But what's unique about it is the way the power-up system works. It doesn't have power-ups in the standard sense of your normal shooters, but how it works is you level up your weapons. So basically, every time you shoot down an enemy, you gain experience, and then your level goes up and your weapon becomes more powerful, and this applies to all of your weapons, and the level never goes back down, even when you die and continue. So that's pretty awesome. The little items that float around your ship work in a similar way. Now at first, they can only circle around your ship or combine with your ship to make your weapon a bit more powerful, but as you level up, they can follow you or even act as like a homing type thing. You can choose your weapon between each stage, but I like to pick the Vulcan. You can't go wrong with that in this game. You only have one life per continue, but you have three shields. But there's no way to replenish the shields. However, when you continue, you start over from the exact point on where you died. So if you have a few quarters, you'll be able to make it a few stages in the game. The graphics are fairly average for the day. I certainly wouldn't say poor, but the music really stands out. It doesn't really sound like your typical shooter music, but it's still very, very good. Give it a listen. Alright, let's see how the Super Nintendo version shapes up. Oh, this is a new intro. Is this it? Oh, this is kind of boring. I'm gonna skip this. Alright. Alright, whoa, look, lots of new weapons over there on the right that weren't in the arcade game. This really is a Super version. But I've got to stick with the Vulcan. You can't go wrong with that. At least I couldn't in the arcade. Let's go. Hmm. The graphics look pretty good. The background seems slightly improved with transparent clouds and whatnot. But the enemies seem a lot smaller than they do in the arcade. And they seem, some of them seem different. Like not even the same enemy at all. Thankfully, the music still sounds really good. You gotta admit that. Maybe not quite as good as the arcade, but it's still definitely worth a listen. Damn, this game is hard. It's a lot harder than the arcade, because when you continue, you start over from the very beginning of the stage, and you only have one life and no way to replenish your shields. The only way you can get anywhere in this game is by choosing the S laser weapon. Hmm. This background from the arcade right here, right before this boss, is missing in the Super Nintendo version. Look, the boss just kind of appears out of nowhere. 
I guess the Super Nintendo was not powerful enough to have that ship fly by. All right, here's stage three. Wow, this looks totally different. In fact, it doesn't look even similar. I, I think I like this better than the arcade. Overall, Super EDF is a pretty decent shooter. It's not the best, but it's not bad. And it does really earn the name Super on its title because there's so much different from the arcade, but it's very similar at the same time. Lots of the bosses are the same and what have you. But overall, I think I'd rather play the arcade because I don't have to start over from the beginning of the stage when I die. Now let's do a quick direct comparison just for fun. And that's EDF, or Earth Defense Force, for you. What did you think? The arcade oh, or Super Nintendo? Well, <laughs> naturally Super Nintendo. Well, if you want to feel that way, I don't blame you. I do. All right, now about the game you're covering. Oh, yeah, here it is, right over here. This, God, double-decking decker is Fantasy Zone for that's the arcade. huge. Tell me about it, man. I never knew Sega, you know, was so frivolous with their chips and just put so many on here. And I think each chip is an individual enemy. Well, it could be, you know, but they could have definitely compressed it a little bit. I don't know, 1986 technology, they're pretty stupid. Well, let's take a look anyways. And here we have Fantasy Zone, released in 1986 for the arcades. This is a side-scrolling shooter starring Opa Opa. I would even go as far as to call this a cute em up because the term fits. The game plays similar to the old arcade game Defender where you can scroll the screen left and right at your whim on a level that loops. The object of the game is to destroy a fixed number of enemy bases per level. Once this is complete you will fight an end boss after defeating it you will be moved on to the next world. Collecting coins from fallen enemies is key. You use these coins to buy ship power-ups from the shop that shows up twice each level. You can buy speed power-ups, bombs, extra lives, and weapon power-ups. Every time you buy an item, it will get more expensive the next time you visit the shop. These items are all super useful and necessary to ensure victory. The only downside is that your weapon power-ups are timed and once the timer runs out you are back to your basic weapon. Fantasy Zone for the Turbo Graphics 16. This is pretty much just like the arcade as the top of a third of the screen is taken up with player stats. Uh, the music cuts out now and again for sound effects, so I guess there's some audio clipping going on there. Uh, the turbo buttons on the power pad are very, very nice and very useful and very necessary. There's also a handy map at the bottom of the screen to help you with enemy base location. The graphics have nice details, such as a hit detector on enemy bases that change color the more it takes damage. And even while fighting a boss, the background stays intact and doesn't go away. And here we have Fantasy Zone for the Sega Master System. The game has some super bright colors, but you know what? There really is not a lot of detail in those graphics. There's a few things missing here that you might uh, like to have actually in this game, such as there is no hit detector on enemy bases, so you don't know how close you are to destroying the base. There's no handy map at the bottom of the screen to help you with enemy base location. Some of the sound effects are overpowered by the music, again, the audio clipping. And during boss fights, the backgrounds disappear. And this is because, yes, the boss is a background in itself, and the Master System can't handle two backgrounds at once. And here is Fantasy Zone on the NES, brought to you by Tengen. This game sports some bright colors, but also has some very simple graphics. It also has some very fidgety scrolling that's going to mess with your eyes uh, after you watch it for a while. And the player information takes up about a quarter of the screen this time around. 
There is also a handy little map at the bottom of the screen showing you the location of the enemy bases. And boss fights also take place on a blank background. And here we have Fantasy Zone for the Famicom, brought to you by Sunsoft. This is definitely the version that should have been brought over to the United States instead of the one Tangan pooped out of their butt. I'm very impressed with this version on the Famicom. The backgrounds are highly detailed, the screen scrolls very smoothly, there's no audio clipping, and boss fights, just like the other versions, are fought on a blank background. Uh, again, there is absolutely no turbo shot on the NES, so a NES advantage is highly suggested if you don't want to have a tired hand for winking your monkey later. This is the re-envisioned version of Fantasy Zone, which is available on the Sega Classics collection for the PS2. Everything is redone in what appears to be cel-shaded polygon graphics. There are also new 3D bonus stages between the rounds. The gameplay is pretty faithful. If you want a slightly beefed up version of the game, this might be for you. The Fantasy Zone Arcade is the benchmark, but not everyone can own the arcade. You can get the Sega Ages Fantasy Zone Collection for the PS2, which has this included. But this would require a Japanese PS2 or a boot disc on a US PS2. But if you want a translated port of Fantasy Zone on your older console, here is how I rate them. And first place goes to the TurboGrafx-16 version. Second place goes to the Sunsoft Famicom version. Third place goes to the Sega Master System version. And the Consolation and Free Pair of Tube Socks goes to the Tengen NES version. fantasy zone you can handle in a nutshell and keep in mind this is just a port of the arcade that we're talking about not super fantasy zone or fantasy zone 2 or fantasy zone gear so on that note Joe what what do you think you know I think I like the Sunsoft Famicom version even more than the Master System version wow I but never... you know it's strange that I like a, uh, an NES game more than I like a Master System game but hey it deserves it it's better that's very kind of you to yeah. say and I Again, can't believe I like a Sega made game and this has got to be like five or something of their games that I actually like. Hey Joe, have yeah. you thought of anything funny to do after the credits for this episode? You know, I've just been thinking about that. I can't think of a damn thing that's funny. Yeah, I I can't either. I've been thinking and there's really nothing funny about Fantasy Zone or Earth Defense Force yeah. that would work. Yeah. So, the only thing I really thought of was something like this. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. 